I've got your spring camp day five practice report, and it's filled with recruiting news. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, fight on everyone. I'm your host, Mark Culkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC your first listen every day. Whether you're watching on YouTube or wherever you like to download your podcast, we are free, and I appreciate your support. And I appreciate it even a little bit more if you became a subscriber, because again, it's free. See that subscriber button, click it. If you like the episode, hit that thumbs up, and then don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you won't miss any one of our five episodes that I bring you Monday through Friday. And this episode of Locked On USC is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com forward slash locked on to today to get started. So as sucky as Tuesday's weather was for spring camp, it was raining, it was cold, it was windy, it was just pure yuck. Thursday was absolutely well, it wasn't perfect, but it was pretty close. Uh, and I probably got to practice a little bit earlier than I should have. I always get always get there early. Uh, get there a little bit too early this time, and it kind of bit me in the uh, in the derriere, so to speak. Uh, practice is supposed to start at three thirty-five. Well, at three twenty-four, when I looked at my phone. Um, Katie Ryan, sports information director, came out. Oh, we're going to be running a little late. Practice is going to start at 4 o'clock. Okay, no big deal. Well, that really means 4.20 to the media because when practice starts for the team at 4 o'clock, when the door's shut, they got about 15 to 20 minutes of walkthrough and and stuff that we're not allowed to see. So that really means 4.20 uh, for the media. As I mentioned, the, the weather wasn't quite perfect, but it was pretty close. Uh, sun was out, which was great. Uh, there was a little bit of a breeze around 65 degrees. So uh, again, compared to Tuesday, perfect works. Although, uh, at the very end of practice, when we were doing the interviews, uh, it did start to kind of spit sprinkle, so to speak. You felt a few drops and then all of a sudden I was like, all right, it's done. Other than that, outstanding. And I want to add this since. Uh, I was interviewing Coach Manning when I started to feel the, the moisture on, on the camera phone. But I should I should mention that when I was doing that, when the media and myself in the scrum were talking to uh, Coach Manning, Russian's coach, uh, if you remember, go back and watch the day four report. I described how a coach was teaching uh, freshman Sam Green how to read and, and, and break down uh, and they were talking about the the mesh point on the read option. Well, Manning talked about that exact same uh, coaching technique aspect during the interview on Thursday. Uh, he was explaining how the defense almost made a play. They were almost making the plays last year, getting the quarterback or, uh, you know, making the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, but they, again, the, the key words to emphasize, they almost made the play. So that's what they're focusing on. It's, it wasn't for a lack of effort last year. It was more about fundamentals. And that's what Coach Manning spoke about or talked about during the interview today. And it's what I uh, you know, was able to catch and, and talk to you guys about on an earlier episode of Locked on USC this week. Go check it out. Day four report. Uh, again, day five, uh, the came, team came out in full pads and – because it wasn't raining, everyone knew which direction to go. Everybody was on Howard Jones Field, so that was a good sign. They weren't looking for a security guard to tell them where to go. Uh, but there, even though they were wearing full pads, uh, there wasn't any tackle to the ground uh, stuff going on, at least when we were watching. However, uh, there was still a bunch of thud type of drills where they were working on the fundamentals, wrapping up for tackling, high, low. So again, there's only you, 
there's only a certain amount of contact allowed that's considered tackling. So they're trying to adhere to the rules, whether it's the letter of the law, who knows, but you know, th these are all, what we don't see, we can't report on, right? Uh, hey, something I noticed last practice, and I noticed it again in this one, Gino Quinones, offensive guard, uh, he's usually like one of the last guys to show up to get ready for practice. So that's telling me that he's coming directly from class because at 315, both days, he's zipping down on his scooter down the ramp to get ready for a scheduled 335 practice. So that's like 20 minutes to, to get taped, you know, dressed and everything. And offensive linemen, it's not like they're just throwing stuff on. They There's a lot of taping going on. So um, obviously he's got class right before spring camp practice. I, I mentioned at the uh, very top of the show that there was a lot of recruiting going on. Heavy recruit presence at practice on Thursday. And that meant uh, recruiting coordinator Annie Hansen. She had her work cut out for her on Thursday. I mean, the list of recruits at USC's practice was long. And it's probably why the start time got pushed back till four o'clock. Uh, so basically, so the coaches and players can schmooze around inside the McKay Center with everybody who was there. Uh, one recruit to keep an eye on. And 2026 quarterback. His name is Brady Schmeigel. You know me. I normally don't pay attention to the sophomores. Uh, however, this young man passes the eyeball test. And I'm also told that he can run very well, too. So I did notice Josh Henson, and uh, he was with him and his family after practice. Another 2026 recruit who was there from local Loyola High School in Los Angeles. Uh, he's a safety. Brandon Lockhart class of 2026. Uh, King Drew High School had a good presence with a few players and their head coach. From the 2025 class, uh, there was Mark, I hope I don't butcher this name, Iannacho, I-H-E-A-N-A-C-H-O-R, and Chinidu Oni Agoro. Um, I apologize if I butchered your names. I will say this, both of them are very well put together, and Chinidu is a physical specimen. I, I wasn't sure if he was a player, coach. Yeah, yeah, big, strong-looking young man, regardless. Uh, there was another offensive line recruit. His name is Marquise Thorpe-Taylor from the state of Washington. He was getting some extra attention from coaches. There was a heavy, heavy St. John Bosco presence at practice, which is great. Uh, Marcellus Williams, class of 2024. Jordan Lockhart, class of 2024. They were hanging out with uh, former St. John Bosco Brave and USC Trojan Chris Steele, who was at practice. So um, Trojan fans should probably feel really good about both of those young men uh, following Chris Steele's footsteps. We'll see what happens. If you want to get some really good recruiting information nuggets, head on over to WeRSC.com when you're done with the show. Scott Schrader, our recruiting guru over there, he's got all those nuggets and notes for you. Yeah, I'm going to save this part for my Friday rant about what makes it tough for the recruits and when their families are on campus at practice. Um, we're not supposed to have any contact. I mean... Don't even look at them if you if you can. So this is going to be part of my Friday rant. Uh, moving forward, the running backs when they came out, man, they are they look different and they all have a different look. Austin Jones, he was the first running back I saw coming out. Got just a all business look. I didn't see Caleb Williams anywhere close, giving him the business this time. Marshawn Lloyd is just built differently. Um, and he's a really good interview, too. So, again, head on over to WeRSC.com. We've got his video interview from Tuesday's practice. What's funny, though, is when he walked by, you have to understand, Marshawn Lloyd has some really thick thighs. And if you're old enough to remember what it sounded like when you wore corduroy pants, you know that swooshing sound? He wasn't wearing corduroy pants, but I heard that sound when he walked by me. So, <laughs> there you go. Um, 
when I first got inside the practice, when they let us in, the first thing I see, I immediately see is Rayleigh Brown, Taj Washington, freshman running back, Quentin Joyner, uh, wide receiver transfer, transfer wide receiver, Dorian Singer. They are fielding the kickoffs from the, off the legs of Dennis Lynch and new specialist, Eddie Zupliki, Zupliki, um, also, I had him pronounce it, so I'll, I will eventually learn how to say it correctly without butchering it. And Coach Kyle McDonald uh, is yelling at each of the kick returners, elbows. Elbows, meaning keep those elbows in, um, tight to the body. Again, fundamentals, technique, major emphasis. And uh, Zachariah Branch, he uh, when he was done working with the punt return group, which is under the tutelage of Luke Heward, he came over for a few minutes and worked with Kyle McDonald, and they were emphasizing, recognizing where you are in relationship to the sideline so you know when to field a kickoff, when to let it go. Just know this, Zachariah is going to play a significant role this season in some way, shape, or form. Um, I mentioned there was a lot of recruits at practice. Well, Rich Paul, who is the founder of Clutch, the Clutch Sports Group, uh, he was watching practice as well. You can do your own um, internet, interweb, Google search to find out who Rich Paul and Clutch Sports are. Just know they have a very long list of high-profile uh, clients. And keep this in mind when you're looking when when we're talking about high profile transfers. It's typically not coaching staffs who are um, persuading players to leave uh, their exist their, their current situation. It's the NIL people who are saying, hey, I've got a situation for you. Let's say you're Marvin Harrison Jr. You're, it would be this type of entity that would say, you know what? Why don't you leave Columbus, Ohio and come out to LA for a year? And this is what we can do for you. Now, with that, if that type of player wants to come to USC, I'm not saying it's happening, but I'm using this as an example. Now, all of a sudden, you know, Lincoln Riley is, I'm not saying he's behind the eight ball because he would sign off on it, but you're kind of now forced to play players. And Marvin Harrison Jr. is the type of player you're not forced to play, you want to play. But the point I'm making is it's, a lot of times those high profile transfers, they are encouraged by the NIL entities. Sometimes they might, it, they're not even thinking about leaving until all of a sudden they hear about, ooh, I can make how much in a year before I go to the NFL? Okay. And then I think I also overheard uh, some talk. I was kind of like a fly on the wall, um, talking about some athletic facility additions and it might, also include the track and field. So there's some big things going on at USC behind the scenes. And uh, we're going to talk more about spring camp uh, coming up in the next segment. First, though, I need you to head on over to FanDuel. Download that app. You know why? Because the tournament is heating at March Madness. I'm doing this episode. March Madness is doing the Sweet 16 on Thursday. So it's probably the perfect time for you to download the FanDuel America's number one sportsbook app, because if you're a new customer, you're going to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. That's pretty cool. So again, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe. It's secure. It's really, it's super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to the point scores, who made the most three pointers. Also at FanDuel, they even give you a chance to combine your bets. So that way you can have a bigger payout with a same game parlay. So don't miss out on the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com forward slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, I'm going to jump right back into my notes and observations from day five of spring camp. This is kind of how it goes. I'm, I'm, you're, you're seeing spring camp how I see it, as it goes. 
and I'm, I kind of jump back and forth uh, for because I'm limited in time uh, with the show. So I'm, if it sounds like I'm going back and forth, that's why. But I'm trying to trying to take you step by step on how I see things, and then interject my thoughts, my observations, my notes that I'm taking based on what I see. So, with that said, um, Mark Sanchez, he was hanging out of practice. Again, uh, with the amount of recruits and high-profile recruits and their families, it never hurts to have someone like Mark, Mark Sanchez hanging out. Oh, and by the way, Jordan Addison, he was there. So um, when you've got a first potential first-round wide receiver, hanging out and the recruits are hanging out and you've got all this, you know, this energy that's going on on the practice field. It was a good day for USC. That's all I can say. Um, Jordan Addison, when he left practice, uh, it kind of looked like he lost something. He had his head down. He was on his phone. And all of a sudden, one of the, one of the team assistants comes running out, Jordan, Jordan, we found it. I guess he'd lost, misplaced his NFL football, and uh, he got it back as when he left. So that was good news. Uh, at, when we were inside practice, uh, again, they keep the offense as far away from the media as possible. So uh, Alex Grinch and Dante Williams, they had the DB groups. They were right in front of me. And one of the first uh, first drills that they were working on uh, I guess we'll, I'll call it a two-hand punch where, um, you know, they're just pretending like you're you're hitting a sled. That's what they were doing with the guy in front of them. And uh, both the coaches were kind of uh, taking turns, screaming at the guys, hit him with the hands, hit him with the hands. And then they eventually would work on some angle pursuits, forcing the guy towards the sideline. And then using the sideline as an extra defender, if you're going to wrap up the guy high, this is the opportunity when you would try and, you know, punch or slap the ball out. Because now you've got the the guy with the ball in his hand. He, you're forcing him out of bounds. And he's typically going to be off balance. And when you're off balance, you don't have all the strength. This is when you they want you to hit at the ball and try and punch it out. So, again, fundamentals, technique, teaching you, teaching them how to, uh, you know, be more efficient in their uh, tackling technique, as well as creating turnovers. Also, watching today's practice was new defensive uh, analyst Greg Brown, who was at practice today. Uh, he was officially announced by USC on Wednesday. So again, he was able to show his face uh, on the practice field. And instead of... Um, I, I had mentioned that they weren't doing any tackling in front of us. So I did get to describe a, a tackling technique that they went through um, before they took their spring break. And it was more of like a tackling low, diving below the knees. Well, today, instead of tackling someone's ankles, um, the linebackers, when I was watching them, uh, they were diving at a blocking pad that someone was dragging by on a rope to, in other words, to simulate the, uh, the same type of technique, you know, diving at someone's ankles to bring them down. And uh, that's probably a, the most prudent way to teach it. That way no one's getting injured. Um, and then eventually they would move, they moved into a uh, pass coverage drill, you know, where the, uh, where the coach, you know, he's got the ball in his hand and, you got one guy running out into coverage. You actually have two guys running into, into a passing route, and then the linebacker has to choose which guy uh, he's covering in coverage. And the coach is, you know, directing them with the with the ball which way to go. This is really where um, Taka Curtis stands out. His the fluidity of his hips, the way he moves in and out of his cuts, so easy. Uh, You'll notice it when you watch him play. He He's a linebacker, but he doesn't move like a linebacker. He doesn't have that stiffness to him. So, again, a very special player that's 
being coached up. You can see it. Uh, Garrison Madden, uh, he looks the part. He had a little, he doesn't move quite as fluidly as Tackett Curtis. So it was it was funny to, to see Tackett move the way he did, and then immediately after to see Garrison, it was just a it was a nice dichotomy. Garrison moves like a linebacker. Uh, I did see uh, the D line group doing a lot of uh, sled work, uh, a lot of cross training between the defensive line and the rush ends. And Coach Manning talked about that as well after practice when we spoke with him. Uh, class of 2023 commit, Elijah Hughes, was also watching practice today. In fact, he was watching very intently uh, while the, the defensive line group was going through their drills and Sean Nua was basically showing the routine. This is what it's going to be like, young man, when you put on the pads and you're out here practicing with this. Uh, overall, there is a lot of, uh, I'll call it loud coaching encouragement and uh, again, a lot of physicality despite not tackling to the ground, at least, again, at least in our presence. Um, so high energy day. Um, and with the way the weather was today compared to Tuesday, it's easy to understand why the energy level was so high. And you want to put on, you want to have that type of vibe going, especially with so many recruits on the sidelines. Um, you want them to feel that. I think they did. It was very evident. Um, I had, took a couple of moments to, you know, look to the other side of the field, you know, 100 yards away or however long it was to to watch the quarterbacks throwing. Uh, and they were doing some deep seam routes. And uh, what was really beautiful, Lake McCree hauled in a, it had to be at least a 40 to five yard, 40 to 50 yard throw. And he just runs so graceful. I mean, he looks like a slot receiver. And he just brought it. He's got the softest hands. Brought it in. No big deal. Turns around. Runs back to the group. Wash, rinse, repeat uh, for the wide receivers and the quarterbacks. Um, I think I saw Zachariah Branch. Dude is so special. <laughs> the wide USC's wide receivers group. Uh, USC quarterbacks, Caleb Williams, Miller Moss, Jake Jensen, Malachi Nelson. Uh, they're very fortunate to have a special group of wide receivers to work with. And then at the end of practice, I saw Eric Gentry make a cameo appearance. He came in on his scooter, and uh, I believe it's his left foot that's in a walking boot. Regardless, one of his feet is in a walking boot. He's on a scooter. Hopefully he will be ready to go. Uh like Lincoln Riley said, soon after spring camp, he'll be ready to go. We'll find out. So that was spring camp day five. That's what I got to see. And uh, the team will the team will take, uh, they will be back at practice on Saturday. The media will not be there. I'm going to assume they're going to have some scrimmage type stuff going on at that point. You know, day six of, officially day six of spring camp. And then afterwards, we get to talk to Lincoln Riley or via Zoom, and he'll fill us in on what took place during Saturday. And basically, it's a review of where we're at, a state of a state of camp to that point, uh, when we talk to the head coach every Saturday. So the week is basically, well, the week is over as far as uh, spring camp is concerned with me in attendance. Uh, I will be able to bring you Lincoln Riley's report next week. Uh, but we're almost done here on Lock on USC for, for this show. Uh, but I do have my Friday rant that's coming up next. First, uh, we're going to talk about the built March Madness bracket. It's here. And we know you have a favorite bar or puff. So now is probably the time to make it count. Go to builtmarchmadness.com to vote for your favorites. You know, I'll be voting, well, I when USC was in, I was voting for cookies and cream. That was my favorite. Now they're out. I'm stuck with double chocolate puff. Chocolate. Yeah, you know me. And if you want USC to win, then you'll be voting for that bar too. Support your team, support your bar or puff. 
And when you vote for your favorite bar or pub, you'll be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky Locked On listeners will get a free box of Built. Not only that, one Locked On fan will win a 12-month subscription to Built to have Built's best bars or their pubs delivered monthly straight to your front door. You got to try Built. Built the best protein bar ever. Seriously, they are so amazing. They're really good. You won't even think they're good for you. And what makes Built Bars and their pups so good? Well, for starters, they're all high in protein, they're low in sugar, and for me, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right. You know it. I said it. Real chocolate. So run on over to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now. That way you can vote for your favorite bar, Puff, and pick up a box while you're there. You can vote every day in March, so hop on in, support your pick. All right. As you know, every episode, every Friday episode of Locked on USC, I try and come at you with a rant, something that just kind of grinds my gears. I got a couple of things. Make it real, real short, real sweet. I'm going to get out of here and let everybody have a great weekend. So I missed USC's Pro Day on Tuesday. It was raining. I was flying in from Phoenix. I knew I was going to be a little bit late. Well, the weather made me late. Der. In fact, Southwest Airlines, uh, they couldn't land in Long Beach, so I, had, I was diverted to LAX. I was upset. I was really I was ticked off. So um, it just seems like no matter what, Southwest Airlines, they find a way to upset their customers. And I know this wasn't their fault. The weather caused this one. But this was on top of, it wasn't even a full flight. And some lady, for some reason, had to sit in the middle seat. And I was already in the window seat. Anyways, sometimes I really don't like people. There was like 50 open seats on the plane. There was a whole row, one row back. She could have had that middle seat. Anyways, the big part of my rant for this show. So I missed Pro Day, and that's why I was upset. That's why I'm ranting. And this really isn't a rant at USC or anybody involved with USC. They are just trying to make sure nobody gets in trouble. But when there's a lot of recruits and their parents at practice, and I'm in a unique situation I go to a lot of recruiting events, a lot of seven on seven. I meet a lot of these recruits and their parents at these events. This is how we I'm able to give you some great insight, not to mention getting it from WRSC with Scott Schrader and Eric McKinney. Well, when these recruits and their parents show up to practice at USC, there is a rule that the media is not supposed to have any contact with them. I get it. I support it. I'm not fighting it. But when a recruit or a parent is walking up to you, they've got eye contact with you, and they're extending their hand to say hello, it's really awkward and uncomfortable to turn your back and walk away. I, it's not in me. I can't do it. I want to just be able to say a quick hello. I'm not allowed to talk to you. Goodbye. I'll talk to you later. I was put in that situation a couple of times at Thursday's practice. So, I don't know what the exact compliance rule is, but apparently it's a rule, and I'm going to do my very best. <laughs> so, uh, recruits, parents, family, if you see me acting like a jerk, turning my back and walking away, don't take it personal. It's not by my choice, okay? I'll apologize when I see you next time. All right, that's this episode of Locked on USC. I hope you enjoyed it. Another week in the books. We will be back with another five episodes next week because that's what we do. All your news and notes for USC in 30 minutes or less. Oh, and I did get some information on the uh, basketball players who jumped on the transfer portal. I'll talk about that next week. So until then, everyone, you know what to do. I want to thank you for making Locked on USC your first listen every day. Don't forget about... Our other podcast, Locked on College Basketball, you get all the news, the notes, experts, insiders from Alex Isaac Shade and Andy Patton, plus recruit from players and coaches. Head on over there. 
You can find it on YouTube. There it is, Locked on USC, in the books.